welcome to Creating with Cassie. I'm so excited for you to join me today because we get to work on one of my most favorite subscriptions from Me Time Delivered, Perfectly Pieced, and we get to stitch together the March 2023 block, which is also called the Drunken Path Block. And it is so cute. It kind of looks like a fan or it has like the curving sidewalk kind of a look and it is so cute. So let's dive right into our box and then let's get stitching. Okay, let's dive into this beauty. Oh, look at that blue. It is such a beautiful blue. And I so love that this is going to tell me a little bit about what's inside this box. So I'm going to go ahead and move that and already ooh and ah, look at this fabric. Okay, I'm dying, but I have to set it aside and be patient for just a second. All right, our thread this month is Cool Mint from Glide. Ooh, that is a beautiful color. It is just a little bit of a gray, a little bit of mint, a hint of blue. It is really pretty. I'm super excited to have that color in my stash, so I'm going to set that aside. We have a little note in here about the New Hoop Studio, which if you haven't heard of it yet, it is Me Time Delivered's newest subscription, and it is going to be a whole lot of fun. And it's just another subscription that comes every month, kind of like Perfectly Pieced, but instead of doing quilt blocks, it does little projects that are mostly made in the hoop. So that's a little shout out for that new subscription program that they have. And I hope that you check it out. It's going to be really cool. All right. So that's fun. Ooh, okay. We got a present. We got a needle. Oh, this is fun. I love it when we get needles and extra fun stuff. And we got a cute little ABC pocket guide about needles. Oh, fun. So this is one of those guides that can kind of tell you all about needles. You have an idea of what you need. That is really neat. And I'm so excited to have this and a cute little tube to keep needles in. I'm just going to be happy about the tube. The needle is a bonus. No, I'm kidding. I'm excited about the needle. So fun. Okay. And so in here, we also have this month's pin, collectible pin, and it shows you that beautiful fan shape that is going to be in this block. Such a fun pin. I love it. Okay. And then of course we have our beautiful instructions and it is so fun. This block is called the drunkard's path block, but it also looks like you're just fanning out your fabric and it's so, so pretty. Those are some examples of the projects that you can do. And there's the block itself. It is going to be so much fun. Let's take a second and look at this gorgeous fabric. Look at this one. It is so cute. I think it's one of those where it has the lighter color fabric and then they go over and they dye it the darker color fabric so that the design pops out. And it is just so pretty and so soft. It's just yummy. Okay, this one is so pretty. It's a really pretty mint color with a little bit of a darker teal and white flower. And then you have this little bit of gray kind of a flower in here. It looks almost purple, but I swear it's gray. That is so cute. I almost want to make a bunch of baby blankets out of it. And it's really, really soft. This one is like snowflake stars. That's what it makes me think of. It think, makes me think of softly falling snow. It is so pretty soft. Just again, that light kind of teal color. It's more blue than this is, if you look at it. Just a little bit more blue, but they go very well together. And then, ooh, look at this. I love the tiny white dot fabrics. This is one of my all-time favorites when they have this kind of design. And this blue color is very periwinkle. So gorgeous. All right, then we have this dark blue. And it has kind of that elongated dot. So it's kind of like a wild pattern everywhere. Very pretty. It will be good to have that dark blue. And then this one, look at this. It is a beautiful soft blue with a little bit of a dark blue star in the design. And there's plenty of that one. There's tons. And these are so soft. Every single one of these. Okay, I can hardly wait. Let's go ahead and get our pieces cut and get stitching. Make sure that you starch and press each of your pieces for your block very well before you use them in your project. And I like to press both sides to make sure that the starch is fully dry before I move on to my next piece. Okay, now that I have all of my fabric prepared, I have hooped my light mesh cutaway stabilizer and put my beautiful cool mint color in my machine because I want to use it. And so we're going to use it while we stitch. So what we're stitching now is the placement line for the batting. And I love that they have this step in here because it shows us exactly where to put the batting. And then we're not guessing. It's all just clearly there. So we're going to go ahead and stitch that real quick and then we'll place our batting. 
Now that I have our placement line stitched directly on our stabilizer, I'm going to take our batting and slide it onto our hoop, making sure that I completely cover that placement line. And I like to kind of press it in place, making sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I can go ahead and stitch the tack down line. And this is going to go around twice, making sure that it is well secured to our stabilizer. Now that we have that tack down line stitch, it's time to trim and I'm going to do that with my curved scissors. The duck bill shaped scissors are also really good for this. And I just like to pull on the batting while I trim so that I am removing it and giving that extra pressure so that I can cut nice and close to the stitches without actually trimming the stitches. And I'm just gonna cut this off on all four sides. Okay, it is time for my favorite part of this whole project. I know it's silly, but I just adore the piecing template. It is my favorite thing because it's my roadmap, it's my treasure map, it just it tells me where everything is going to go, and it's just my favorite part. And I think it's fun to have a favorite part that you get to look forward to every time you make a block. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it stitch that out for us so it can show us where we're going to be laying out all of our fabric. Ta-da! There is all the beautiful piecing templates stitched right there on our batting. Now, the first four pieces of fabric that go into this block are really fun because they're all exactly the same size. So there's no guessing, no like, well, is that six and a half or six? None of that. It is just all the same size. So it's going to be so easy to go ahead and piece these. And we're going to start by piecing right here. So this bottom one is piece number one. So we're going to take our first piece of fabric and slide it into place, making sure that it is right side up and make sure that we cover the area that it's going to be placed at completely smooth it in place and then we can go ahead and stitch the first tack down line it is time to trim so i'm going to take my hoop and rotate it just a little bit so that it is easier for me to trim this and i'm just going to take my fabric and pull it nice and taut slide my scissors here at the start here and make sure that i keep the pressure on the fabric while i cut up so that i can cut nice and close and then i can remove this piece and this is a fairly decent triangle i could probably use that for something else so i'm going to save that for later and then I can go ahead and return my hoop to the machine. So we are doing all of these fan pieces on the pathway here, the same kind of fabric, but you could actually vary them and have a lot of fun with it, but we're going to keep them all the same right now. And I'm going to go ahead and slide the second piece right here onto my project and smooth it in place. Now I wanted to show you that I'm doing this inside my machine because that's always been an option. Usually I do it when I'm cutting, but if you like it in your machine, you absolutely can. The only trick when you do it this way is making sure that you get the sides that are further away from your eyes and making sure that it is fully in place, but this is absolutely an option that you can do is you can place your fabric when your hoop is already in your machine. And then we can go ahead and stitch the tack down line. Time to press. The first thing we'll do is press those new stitches and making sure that they're nicely joined with the fabric. Then we'll take our fabric and pull it nice and taut against that stitch line and come in here and make sure that we press it well. We want beautiful crisp lines. So I like to press my fabric right against that brand new stitch line, making sure that it is very tight and taut and beautiful. So, okay, once you are satisfied with your pressing job, you can go ahead and return your hoop to the machine. Okay, so what we're stitching now is the cut line for piece number three, so it can join our block, and this is being done on piece number two. Time to trim, so we'll go in here and take our fabric, hold it taut, and trim right down. And this time, I didn't rotate it, I probably should have, but that's... You see the bend in my wrist when I do that. So next time I'll rotate it and I can take this and it's still a good piece. So I'm gonna save it. And then I am going to take piece number three, line it right up against the stitch line. 
So this is showing you the difference if you line it up here versus in your machine. And then we can smooth it in place and we're ready to stitch it. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number three. Time to press, so we'll take our fabric and lightly press those brand new stitches, pull the fabric over nice and taut, make sure you give it a little tug so you can make sure it's taut against that stitch line, and then come in here and press it really well. So I'm going to move up, and make sure I pull and press so we can have beautiful seam lines here. This is looking kind of cool. I'm super excited to see how this turns out. What we're stitching now is the cut line for piece number four, and that's being done on piece number three. And I'm excited to have the last bit of our drunkard's path here. Join this block. Okay, time to trim, and I am going to rotate like I should have done last time. And I'm going to take my scissors, come in here, pull the fabric taut, trim straight up making sure I'm close to those stitches. All right, remove that fabric and we're ready to place piece number four into our path here. All right, and we're gonna line it right up against that stitch line, smooth it in place, and we're ready to stitch it. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number four. Time to press, press those brand new stitches, then take our fabric and we're gonna pull it straight over. Now I am going to be really close to my hoop over here just because of the size of hoop that I have. So I'm gonna pull this taut and focus right here on my seam line. And then I'm going to line my iron right up on the edge and I'm going to give it a little bit of a crease. And I do this so that my fabric will stick up where I want it to and it won't be flopping in my way. So I just have a little bit of a crease right here that I pushed into the fabric so it stays out of my way. All right, so what we did is we just finished putting all four of these pieces in, which is the pieces that were all the same size for our drunkard's path. And now we're going to work on the ones that are all different sizes over here that finish our block. And we're going to be starting with this teeny little sliver right here, which is piece number five. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch the cut line for piece number five. So it is time to trim and I'm just going to trim off this little bit of piece number one and this teeny little bit over here on piece number two. So I'm just going to slide my scissors in here and hold the fabric taut while I trim up. And then when I get to here, I'm going to make sure I have all three pieces of fabric there. And I'm just going to trim up a little bit past where those stitch lines are. And then I just curve my scissors off so I don't have to worry about where I'm stitching or shouldn't be cutting up here. So then I'm going to take piece number five, which is my smallest little piece, and I'm gonna line it right up with that stitch line, making sure that I cover that area of stitches, smooth it in place, and we're ready to stitch it. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number five. Time to press. We're gonna press this right here on those new stitches, and then we are again gonna be close to the edge of our hoop, so I'm going to take my fabric, pull it taut, and slide my iron close to it, give it a little bit of an extra push, and then I am going to crease that fabric just a little bit there on the edge so that it stays where I want it to and it doesn't move. Okay, and then you can return the hoop to the machine. What we're stitching now is the cut line for piece number six so it can join our block. So that cut line was stitched across piece number five, piece number two, and piece number three. So we're gonna come in with our scissors, pull our fabric up, and I'm just going to cut in at an angle because I'm close to my hoop here. Make sure I cut right against that stitch line. And I'm just going to come under here, make sure I grab the fold of fabric that's under there and clip that whole piece off. 
Then I'm going to come in here. I have some stitches here. I can pop them or leave them, but I'm just going to leave them and cut in. And then I'm going to come up and cut that piece off. Make sure I grab all the folds of fabric right here on piece number three and cut off that little bit there. And then I can go ahead and grab my next piece of fabric, which is my next smallest. So this was my smallest. This one's just a teeny, teeny bit bigger. And I'm gonna line it right up with that stitch line making sure it covers all of it, smooth it in place and return the hoop to the machine. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number six. Okay, it's time to press. So I'll come in here and press those stitches, take the fabric and I'm going to pull it taut. Make sure I slide my iron right against that new stitch line making sure that it's a nice tight iron there on the stitch line and I, again I'm really close to my hoop which is totally fine but I'm going to come in and give it a little bit of a crease so that fabric just kind of flips up on the top there and then it doesn't get in my way or flop over okay we can return the hoop to the machine what we're stitching now is the cut line for piece number seven I'm excited for this one to join the block. It's going to make a big difference on how it looks. Okay, so this cut line stitched on piece number six, piece number three, and a little bit up here on piece number four. So we're gonna go in here and trim. And again, I'm just going to bring my scissors and cut in right to that stitch line. Then I'm going to go ahead and hold the fabric taut and trim up. When I get to the end, I'm going to make sure I get that little bit underneath here, clip it off. And then I'm going to come in here again. I have some stitches there so you can choose, especially on your fabric choices. If something's lighter or darker, if you need to pop all those stitches, I'm just going to cut in today. And then I can go ahead and cut all the way across and I'm gonna grab the little bit here on piece number four and just trim that right off. And we'll be ready to put piece number seven into our block. So I'm gonna grab it, slide it over here to my stitch line, making sure that it covers it completely smooth it in place and then I can return the hoop to the machine. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number seven. Time to press. I'll press those stitches right here and then I'll take my fabric and fold it up nice and taut and press that line making sure it's nice and tight and beautiful. Just iron it really well. And then I have a little bit of a corner over here on the edge of my hoop. So I'll again, give it a little bit of a crease so it folds up on the edge of my hoop and it doesn't get in my way. Then I can return the hoop to my machine. What we're stitching now is the cut line for piece number eight so it can join our block. So this cut line stitched across here, piece number seven and a little bit of piece number four. So we're going to go ahead and trim, take our scissors and cut in. We're going to cut right against that stitch line, holding the fabric taut. When you get to the end, make sure you get this little bit on both sides, clip it. And then we're going to grab the fabric here on piece number four and trim that off. All right, look at that, looking good. This is our last piece, you guys. We'll line it right up against the stitch line, making sure it's lined up all on both sides. Smooth it in place and return the hoop to the machine. What we're stitching now is the tack down line for piece number eight. Time to press. We're gonna press these stitches and this is our last piece, you guys. So look, there we are. How fun! Can you think of all the most amazing things you could do with this block? This beautiful curve is just super fun. I think that you could play with it and just have a good time. Okay, so now that I have this pressed nice and well, I'm gonna return it to our machine. 
Okay, what we're stitching now is the final outline stitch that doubles as a cut line. And this is just really gonna show us the block without all the extra fabric hanging off the end. And it's so fun when you get to this part because we know we're almost done and we know we're almost to the quilting, which is my favorite part about these blocks because then when I'm done making them, they're already quilted and it's just easier to finish my project. It's one of the reasons why I love the block by block quilting method. So there we are, there's the block, looking pretty good. Now that we have the block all made, it is time to quilt it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the machine do that. And then we'll show you this block and cut it out and just be excited. So let's do this. Okay, so let's take our block out of the hoop and we'll get this beauty trimmed up and you can really see it. It's so fun. I absolutely love this. If you can see the quilting, it just has kind of like two curvy lines like this. It's so pretty. All right, so I'm going to grab my ruler and my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut this from the front today. So I'm going to line this right up. And then I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to line up the other side and cut. Rotate our hoop, line it back up, cut, and then we'll cut our last side and we'll be able to see this block in all of its glory. All right. There you go. You guys, look what we made. Isn't it amazing? I love this block. It is so much fun. I just want to make a whole bunch of them and do either little curvy paths or little fans. I think you can have so much fun with it. And I think that it's one of those blocks where you can do it all the same or you could switch out the colors and just have like a grand old time with this block. So thank you so much for joining me today and stitching this along with me. If you haven't heard me time delivered yet or perfectly pieced, I hope that you will check it out. I have links below. And in the meantime, I hope that you go and make something beautiful and we'll see you next time. Bye.